you say all this, you make great points, there's the facts that back it up. But yet, uh, a lot of uh, African Americans in power, a lot of black politicians, uh, are clearly on Hillary Clinton's side. So, how do you square that? I, I know Cornel yeah. West's theory, Brother West says, uh, you know, that they mistook the freedom train for the gravy train. Uh, yeah. Okay, but I, I, don't, I don't know what your thoughts on that are. Because if you're an African American, you've got to be thinking, okay, James says this, Cornel West and Ben Jealous say this, uh, Michelle Alexander says it, Spike Lee says it. Yes, a lot of you know, African Americans who deeply care, who are activists, uh, say these facts. On the other hand, I've got all these guys uh, yeah. who are, are so called leaders who are telling us, no, Hillary Clinton's fantastic. Yeah. No, and this is, this is part of the sad reality of politics. Um, you know, back when, uh, just to be very clear, you know, Color of Change is, is run by Rashad Robinson. I'm on the board, but, but Color of Change does what it does. Um, you know, when I was uh, running Color of Change, a diff different era, um, you know, I saw up close the way things worked. And I'll tell you now, right? For me, right, I do, uh, you know, I'm on the board of different progressive organizations. I work with a lot of folks. Um, I have friends uh, that are in, in the Hillary camp and in the Bernie camp. Um, and I've had to think about, okay, um, just like I had to think about then, okay, what are the costs for me saying certain things? And I'll tell you, you know, to, to talk about Hillary in the ways that I'm, I'm talking, um, there's a cost to it. Um, you know, I, I'm, I want organizations that I'm a part of to be supported by donors. There are donors who do not like this. Um, and what, what you, you've got a political machine that the Clintons um, have, in, have in place that can bring consequences to you. So if you look at, for instance, the Congressional Black Caucus, you've got a, a, a good set, I mean, you've got a breadth of members here, but you've got some very progressive members um, who have a very progressive agenda, um, who are right on point on race. And you'll see some of those folks not, you know, they're standing back. They're not endorsing Clinton. They're not going to endorse Bernie. They're just going to kind of keep their powder dry, if you will, because should they, and there's very few, but should they come out and say support an opponent, an opponent of the Clintons, um, you know, they could be screwing themselves, right? At the same time, you have some, and, and you know, I, I, I love, um, I, I think um, John Lewis is, a, is an important historical figure, um, but if you see what he said the way he said it, I don't think John Lewis could in his heart actually believe what he said, right? Um, and so, so then you have to ask yourself, why, right? Uh, you have a Jim Clyburn who had a very hard time with the way things played out in 2008 um, as, as we were approaching South Carolina. I mean, he did exchanges between he, he and Bill Clinton. He went on the record very upset about what was happening. And now he's supporting Clinton. Now you, you've got to wonder, um, you know, uh, so I, I think the costs of being on the wrong side of the Clintons is high, and the benefit of being on the, the right side is also very high. So, you know, no mystery, right? I mean, black politicians are politicians. <laughs> black folks in D.C. are folks in D.C. who also are black. Um, and so I think, you know, what the, the Clinton campaign has done a, a, a wonderful job of um, is using the power of, of their machine to get the right people saying the right things at the same at the, at the right time, um, it's unfortunate because I believe that you know it. When you see a figure like John Lewis, uh, if you're an African American and his basically you know civil rights credentials, when you come when you see him lifting up Hillary Clinton um, and also basically you know painting her oppo opponent negatively in ways that actually aren't true, um, but that's of course beside the point. When you see that, you think, oh, this must be a candidate for me, and and that's. Again, what I think is so hard because, you know, we have figures saying things and painting a certain picture when we have facts that paint a very different picture. And what's most accessible, you know, John Lewis will be on TV. That, that story is covered very widely. The actual details of what Hillary Clinton has done, both in terms of policy support as well as the, the behavior of herself in the context of her campaign, you know, that's, that's way below the fold. That's, that's <laughs> if it's anywhere. Um, so yeah, I, I, that's that's my take is that you've got politicians um, who have to be. They think about, you know, w what's my access going to be? Wh what's my position going to be in one, two, three years? Especially if Hillary Clinton becomes president, right? People don't want to be on the wrong side of that. Okay, James, you're necessitating another question because the audience at home doesn't know what it means the the cost of of being against Hillary Clinton if she wins. Uh, you know, yeah. the, when you talk about uh, donors being similar 
they they don't know that that system. So yeah. just give us give us one more step in that direction so people have a better sense of it. Yeah, no, absolutely. So um you know, let's say that similar when Obama become we became president, right? If you look at who gets positions in the White House, um there are moments where, you know, you have uh you know, folks who are in Congress um r- running to get reelected. Does does the president come and stump for you? Does he help you? Um, or does she help you, right? Um, you know, and, and similarly, right, you have folks who um, work in campaigns. I mean, this is, this is outside of Clinton, but I want to just paint the picture. When you have a, a sitting, let's say, Democratic member of Congress, right, um, doing, let's say, bad things, and, and there's someone who challenges, challenges them in a primary, another Democrat, people who go and work for that challenger's campaign, oftentimes, um, you know, and this is, I've seen this happen, where if you go work for that challenge, I don't care what the issues are, if you're actually going to disrupt um, the trajectory of someone who's sitting in Congress, um, good luck trying to find work as a, as a campaign person, you know, next go round, right? The Democratic establishment will do that. Similarly, the Clintons, and these folks don't forget, right? <laughs> they will let you know when it comes time to have access to the White House, when it comes time to actually having them validate what you're doing. And in the donor community, um, you know, there are folks, you know, for whom if you undermine a candidate of their choice, um, it, it's, it's, it's a problem for you as an organization. It's, it's a calculation organizations have to make. Um, I don't know if I'm painting the picture well yeah, enough. I don't yeah, feel like no, I quite I, I am, but it. yeah. And I think people get it. Look, a lot. The Clintons have accrued an enormous number of donors throughout their career, uh, because of the system that we're under. They had to do that, right? Yeah. And I, I, I can't stand that system. I, but I understand what they did. But that, but the access to those donors then creates power with so many other groups that those donors also give to, right? Yes. So that's if, right. if they're going to give to, and it doesn't have to be African American groups, it could be anybody, right? Right. All those progressive groups. A lot of them are reliant on the same donors, and if the Clintons yes. say, "Hey, maybe you shouldn't give to that progressive group in Washington," well, that is tremendous power. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. And that you know, when I was running Color of Change many years ago, that was one of the things. You know, there were there were moments when we challenged, for instance, um, very powerful black politicians, and we, you know, I was told, "Look." You know, you going into these waters, you disrupting the way things work, you basically going after, in this case, you know, we had some issues with the, con- the Congressional Black Caucus. Um, uh, just quick, quick side point, the Congressional Black Caucus PAC endorsed Clinton um, in, this, in this race. They also refused to endorse Donna Edwards, right, who is a progressive hero, um, you know, has, has, has been a champion for working people, for low-income black people. Um, just a brilliant um, member of Congress. She's, she's running for Senate. And so, you know, there's a question about, well, who, wait a minute, who's calling the shots here in the case of the, the Congressional Black Caucus PAC? It turns out there's some, some members of the CBC, and there's also a bunch of lobbyists. <laughs> so, you know, that starts making sense. But if you go after the CBC, right, you're disrupting um, the way DC power, the way black DC power works. And I was told, you do this, right? No black member of Congress, no black uh, kind of DC insider will be seen with you. You, you know, you're going to have problems with donors. You better watch it. And you know, it, it turns out I, I didn't listen to that because uh, you know, for a variety of reasons, um, you know, I started Color of Change to challenge power, and I wasn't going to kind of in the final hour when we were actually about to get something done back down out of fear that the money would come. I, I figured, look, we do good work. Um, we hold the right people accountable, and we'll figure it out. But that's a tough equation, and a lot of folks, weren't, you know, are not in a position to 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 play with th- their income in that way. But it, it it felt necessary. But that's what people will hold over your head. Um, and similarly, so w- with with the Clintons, it's just it's you're taking a very big risk um, by putting yourself on the other side.